We walked many twists and turns in the labyrinth, looking at questions of justice and acknowledging the complications that we saw, all with the prayer of encountering God at the center. We also walked the twists and turns on the way back out of the labyrinth, in that we began to examine different possibilities for action. In the wake of General Conference 2019, we at Dumbarton have wondered whether we will leave the United Methodist Church, and we have wondered how to discern what to do as a community. Some of our forum speakers may help us examine these possibilities by their examples. I, I, um, I really don't, I mean, I really don't have any regrets and I really am thankful for the discernment, the eight month discernment process, because I think it really gave us a chance to really think about this. And for me anyway, um, uh, I really don't, I don't have any regrets. Um, I may have had some, I mean, I have had some surprises about the process, but not, not regrets. The church formed the Bracket Discernment Steering Committee to oversee our process, which began for all 10 churches on September 26, 2019. This was meant to be a time of ref reflection and to be a collective process with other Methodists. Meetings were held monthly or bi-monthly and had strong partic participation by our congregation. After the eight month process, we decided to move forward with disaffiliation. We held two votes. One was a straw vote to begin researching the steps we need to take to complete disaffiliation. So as we uh, moved into disaffiliation, we decided to handle this as a formal project using project management tools and a project plan and things like and that. We had broke into sub teams that covered finances, uh, this definition that Joanne's already mentioned and how to form an actual nonprofit corporation uh, separate from the UMC. So from the beginning at the end of uh, May to the end, which will be the end of December is approximately uh, seven months. All through this process, we worked with legal counsel, which was very important to our process um, to make sure we had all the titles properly identified to make sure the legalese was, was uh, under, well understood. Uh, um, the reason I said previously that we needed to get done by the end of 2020 is that you always have to pay a year ahead. So if we had waited into 2021, we would be paying 2022's mission shares. Um, we are going to use our parsonage as, um, as collateral on, our, on the loan. So in uh, the middle of October, on October 17th, 83% of the members at the New England Annual Conference um, ratified our resolution to disaffiliate. So a big, a big part of the change is moving from an Episcopal to a congregational polity. And in a congregational polity, the church assembly, the, all of the voting members of the church uh, is the ultimate say of the ultimate authority in the church. So um, as I mentioned, we're, going, we're using the parsonage as collateral and we were able to get a 10 year commercial loan for 140,000. Uh, it turns out that our monthly payment is less than our U UMC mission shares, so it is doable from a budget standpoint. So we did consider the option of becoming strictly a, an independent church, but there are a number of advantages of joining a denomination. Um, there's a lot of support in transition if, if we need a new pastor. There is support for training. There is support for these uh, group policies that we mentioned. And so the church is, it feels that it's probably, will probably associate with a denomination or an association. In so many ways, 
we feel ourselves kindred spirits uh, with you. In, in some ways, we're different than you because we're not yeah. on an island. No, and that's right. We do yeah. travel a long ways to get to our church. We're not really a neighborhood church. Yeah. In many ways. So that's, mm -hmm. that's different. So there's some right. similarities and some differences. I would suggest there. just, you know, I'm thinking, well, what can Dumbarton do? Uh, one question I think we need that the task force might want to continue to consider is do we really see ourselves so unique as to be an independent church? Um, we, we heard from folks, we heard from folks in um, the folks at Asbury Memorial last week. Um, and we heard how they were very unique in the Savannah uh, in the South Georgia annual conference and that they were just didn't fit the mold there. Um, uh, Ella, you asked a very prescient question which or comment, which is we're in a very different place vis-a-vis -vis our annual conference. Uh, we have uh, over, you know, I shouldn't say overwhelming majority, but I, you know, we feel every year when we go, we, it's better um, to annual conference and that more and more people are coming along in terms of the, you know, full inclusion of all of God's children. So I would say, let's try to create a communication network with other progressive churches in Baltimore, Washington and Northern Virginia. That's great. I think we have enough within the Methodist connection to do a, a you know, get a group. Um, question came up Sunday about pensions and that uh, if you have a group of 50 churches, you can work with West Path to come up with your own, you know, retirement pension plan or whatever. So I, you know, I think easily we have, we could probably come up with 50 churches that would, you know, might want to do something like that, if in fact that were to come about. But I think it would be good to be in conversation to hear what other churches are thinking. Um, I would like to see us share, you know, in, in the be warm effort of trying to get more black churches to join RMN. I'd like us to be talking to some black churches about Reconciling Ministries Network. Right. Um, um, I think we should move forward with our efforts that we started about a year ago uh, with our setting up an LLC or a 501c3 or whatever we were talking about doing and our new logo and our new name. There's a lot of churches that are being careful about their branding and, and have been since there was, you know, there's been all this crazy uncertainty about what's going on with the Methodist church. And just to be aware of what's happening regionally and nationally, uh, you know, try to keep in touch. I will try to keep, you know, feeding information back about what I hear on the national level and the regional level. So if Dun um, in Dun I for this moment in Dumbarton's the, discernment the, process of what does it mean, who are we as a church and where do we, where do we sort of hitch our wagon, so to speak, in terms of are we going to stay in the United Methodist Church? Are we going to leave the denomination? Are we like the, in the discernment that Dumbarton's in right now, it's including as many people as you can in the process. It's hearing their story. It's, it's creating a collective story of us, of who is Dumbarton, um, but rooted in the individual contributions of everyone who's a part of Dumbarton. One of the things that, that Kelly and I did offer, more so me, was to help think about what are some ways to add um, action steps and steps that you can take um, to your discernment process and how can can we support you in that? How can I support you in that? Um, one of the things that comes to mind, and I know Melanie knows this tool and there may be others on the call that know this tool, and you all as a reconciling congregation and, and, a, and a congregation that's been reconciling for so long, um, use this tool in the very beginning, I think, um, is the welcoming and, and uh, building an inclusive church toolkit. It is a toolkit that's built to help churches decide whether or not to become reconciling. But to me, what it really is, is a church, it's a toolkit to help churches really discern what are the steps they need to be taking. And, and, and it's the tools to do that, to, to take those steps um, in an intentional discernment process. And, uh, and so I really want to encourage you all, and I'm happy to share this tool, this toolkit with Ella and Tim, and, and they can sort of pass it along. But that toolkit could help really help your discernment process. It could really help um, think about what are you doing and how are you doing it and what are the ways you're in, engaging everyone in the process. Because I know Dumbarton well enough to know that the church council can't just make the decision alone. That the church council has to make the decision alongside every person who sits in, who sits in a pew, who sat in a pew in Dumbarton uh, and who joins Dumbarton for worship um, and all the different things that Dumbarton does through the day, through, through, 
every day of the week. Um, and so it's really about engaging as many people as you can in the process and building consensus along the way, right? It's building consensus along the way, building relationships. So whatever step Dumbarton takes next, Dumbarton takes it with everybody at Dumbarton. Um, 